Um, I really appreciate that everyone's here. Hi, I'm Adrian. I'm going to talk about KDE on FreeBSD. And <clears throat> I would like to remind you beforehand that KDE is a community. People talk about it like it's software, but KDE is a community. And we make a bunch of software. Some of it is called KDE Frameworks. That's 80 some odd libraries that build on top of Qt that give you useful desktop integration, useful extensions to Qt. It also builds KDE Plasma, which is the desktop part that everybody always thinks about. Um, it also builds KDE applications. The applications range from the simplistic color, color paint type applications to advanced video editors. But as a community, we build a whole lot of software and people call it KDE. There is no KDE 5. Um, except in ports, um, because it had to have a name, and the previous one was called KDE4, and ports numbering is complicated, so that's why it's called this way. But the software we install is called KDE Frameworks, KDE Plasma, and KDE Applications. And then you run, and run GNOME applications on top of that, because some of them are really good, like Glimpse. So KDE runs everywhere, right? It runs on laptops and desktops and phones and tablets and things, and even on other operating systems. And none of us care about this list, right? Because uh, we really want to have FreeBSD on the desktop, um, at least until Netcraft confirms that FreeBSD is on the desktop. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how we do KDE on the desktop, but um, <coughs> sorry? Oh yeah, no, that, that's right. It's supposed to go off screen. Um, <clears throat> so the three main KDE on FreeBSD people doing the maintenance of the ports uh, is uh, Tobias, myself, and Kai Knobi. Um, Tobias is more on the FreeBSD side. I'm slightly more on the KDE side. And Kai is stuck doing WebEngine. And WebEngine is Chromium. And everyone knows that Chromium on FreeBSD is a horrible, horrible thing. Um, maybe not everyone knows that. But it's 600 patches uh, where you're fighting upstream. And that's no fun at all. So we really appreciate that Kai deals with that. There's a shark over there. You may want to visit the shark. Go ahead. <laughs> Aside from the main porting team, uh, we've also got uh, Gleb Popov, uh, Loise, Raphael. Uh, they all incidentally do porting work or do uh, supporting work. Um, Gleb, ROD, um, is responsible for BS, BS disks, which is very useful. I'll talk about that briefly later. Um, we also work together with the desktop at uh, group that's recently been founded. Uh, to bring together all the FreeBSD on the desktop developers as one maintainer group. And about half of it is GNOME. That's why GNOME is at the bottom here, half cut off. See, I thought about it. Um, <clears throat> because we work closely together with the GNOME, main, GNOME ports maintainers um, because we have very similar needs, right? We're trying to produce a nice FreeBSD on the desktop. And sure, one of them is more shiny than the other, and the other has a green tablecloth, but <laughs> so <clears throat> it doesn't really matter. It's better to work together. Um, the KDE FreeBSD team maintains the KDE FreeBSD stack, which has uh, CMake in there. Uh, CMake is a C++ meta build tool. Um, it's used by about a little over 2,000 ports. Um, a lot of C++ code uses CMake nowadays. Um, we maintain that as part of the infrastructure. Uh, that means that every time that updates, which is every six weeks, uh, we get to exp run it and deal with a whole lot of old, horrible C++ code that no longer works with the latest CMake. Um, anyone want to make snide C++ comment? I mean, <sighs> yeah, yeah. Um, we maintain Eigen, which is an, an algebra library. Ninja, everyone's favorite build tool, right? Because it's <laughs> Ninja in combination with CMake is fine. Um, I wouldn't write that by hand. Um, the reason we maintain Ninja is that we did experiments. Ninja builds KDE software about 10% faster than 
uh, GNU make or BSD make, uh, and we like those 10% because they're long compiles. We maintain Qt, which is the toolkit upon which KDE uh, is founded. Uh, we maintain Poplar together with Desktop, together with GNOME, uh, because um, Poplar is a PDF viewing library, and that's used both by Events and Ocular, the KDE uh, application. So that's that's where our shared uh, our shared stack comes in. And of course, we do the actual KDE frameworks, Plasma, and applications. Frameworks releases once a month, uh, Plasma every three months, and applications twice a year. <clears throat> Hi, the sharks are over there. <laughs> um, so we have very regular release cycles. Uh, that means an awful lot of, of rebuilding and exp running. And I would like to take a moment to say thank you to Antoine for pushing the button all the time for us on those exp runs. So KDE is a desktop. Um, the curious thing is, once you get your desktop up and running, you can't see the difference. Um, actually, if you look real closely, here's an OpenSUSE logo. So that's what it looks like on uh, OpenSUSE. And if I were to switch into FreeBSD and start my desktop, it would look like this, except with the little K, lo K logo there. I mean, there really is no difference. And so that's the curious thing. In the end, if you're just a plain desktop user, the underlying OS doesn't really matter. Except that in the case of FreeBSD, you get CFS snapshots and, and jails and all the other coolness that you can also run on your system. But from a desktop perspective, it doesn't really matter. Um, once you've got desktop uh, KDE up and running as a desktop, um, everything works uh, almost. Um, <coughs> this is the whole list, or this is a list that I took from Tobias. Uh, user management is one of those things. Uh, there's uh, a KDE system settings module where you can do user management, add users, remove users from the system. And of course, we call that user add. And on the Linux world, that's called add user. And, or is it the other way around? I can never remember. <laughs> Everything is horrible. Um, so user management doesn't quite work. But how many of us actually do user management from a graphical user interface, right? You, ooh, ooh. OK, so, so you're our test user next time. <laughs> and if you don't use KDE, you can be GNOME's test user. That would be great. Uh, power management is one of those things. We've got a longstanding PR about login.conf, the, the special um, resource limit configurations that, that FreeBSD has. Um, removable devices is a thing. That's where BS Disks comes back in. And ejecting CDs. And I'm going to focus on ejecting CDs because I happen to have a CD drive in my workstation. Wow. I'm old school. <laughs> um, this is an, an incredible corner case as far as I'm concerned. But it's also one of those things where if you happen to have one, it's important. right? And every person's bug is really important to them and stupid to the developers who don't have the same uh, the same needs. Um, how does CD ejecting work? Well, Solid is one of the KDE frameworks, and it deals with hardware. It's an abstraction layer. KDE loves abstraction, abstraction layers. We have abstraction layers on abstraction layers built on C++. You get the picture. Um, it's, and one of the backends it can use is HAL. HAL is, of course, the hardware abstraction layer. So that's where we get the abstractions upon abstractions thing. Um, the HAL backend on the Linux side in the code base, KDE code base, has been removed entirely because nobody uses that anymore. They have better things, namely UDEV. 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 Thank you. Um, it's been almost entirely removed for the FreeBSD side, except for one little bit, and that's ejecting the CD. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> and that's why we have a package message saying, turn on HAL. Uh, can you just use the eject command? You can, of course, just use the eject commands. I mean, that's what I do. I s switch to the terminal, type in eject. I mean, can you use the eject command? Uh, <laughs> I, suppose, I suppose we could. I mean, you can do a lot of stupid things in <laughs> .desktop files. So it would work out. But 
the actual code is trying to talk to solid, which is trying to talk to its own back end. And we'd have to special, we'd basically rip out HAL and replace it with a C library system, a user local bin eject. Some, yes, it works. It also feels a bit kludgy. Um, so that's why ejecting a CD from the desktop still needs HAL. And we're going to fix that. Um, and we're going to fix that together with GNOME because GNOME also has some remaining HAL uh, dependencies. So BS Disks is stuff that uh, Gleb uh, has created. It's basically a shim that provides the kind of interface that um, it, it provides a UDEV type interface uh, that uh, applications can talk to. So we can use the Linux code unmodified and uh, deal with the API it expects. This is a successful approach because it means that we write code once to provide an API, translate the API to, some, to what we do natively, uh, and then once we've got that, all the desktop environments that expect the Linux API uh, can use it. So that means that we have shared effort in getting stuff done. So we need to fix up B as disks uh, to support ejecting the CD. Again, it's a terrible niche case, but it's got to be done. Once we've done that, we can drop HAL from the FreeBSD side of KDE. And from there, we can drop about 1,100 lines of code in KDE upstream. And that will make a bunch of people very happy that we no longer have to deal with HAL at all anywhere. So happiness is in the future. <laughs> Um, but uh, as always, the last 5% of the talk takes five minutes. Um, no, the, la the last little bits are always uh, take the longest. So we've got a fine, work fine functioning KDE desktop plus all the KDE applications, but getting this polishing done takes a long time. It takes a lot of coordination. And just finding it, I mean, it, the only reason I'm, I'm complaining about CD ejecting is because I have one. And I use that to rip Rick Astley CDs. I kid you not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's... <laughs> I like the way you think. Um, so we're connected to many different parts here. Uh, we're connected to GNOME, where we work together on lots of the infrastructure. Uh, we now have desktop at to uh, unify some of these efforts. Wayland is coming in about 40 minutes. Uh, so Rachel will be telling you about Wayland and what's happening there. Uh, we're, KDE is also eager to cooperate on that so that we can lift the whole thing into the modern world. And that's sort of the end of my, my bits. To sum up, uh, KDE runs on FreeBSD just fine. There's bits and bobs that need, need work, and we're still cooperating with everyone to get that fixed. Wayland is coming, and we're happy about that. Any more questions? Uh, more comments. I just wanted to like, uh, uh, show my appreciation for you uh, refer, um, using Glimpse instead of the <laughs> image manipulation program. Uh, because my friends are the maintainers. I see. So more of a question than a, no, a, more a comment than a question. You should be eaten by monsters for commenting instead of questioning. <laughs> um, <clears throat> thank you for using Glimpse. My pleasure. Other questions? One here. Um, compositing video acceleration, how is that? Compositing video acceleration, how is that? Well, uh, everything goes through OpenGL. And uh, if you're, as long as you're using uh, DRM KMOD for Intel is just fine. Um, I run two quad HD displays off of that, and it's fine. Does it use, like, watching videos, Netflix? That's all perfect. Yeah. Um, I've never tried watching Netflix on my D BSD desktop, yeah. but... DRM might be an issue. Okay, but the uh, or, or the NVIDIA uh, proprietary drivers are fine as well. Um, the one time I tried Radeon, uh, things got ugly. <laughs> but so. I don't know enough about that. Uh, we should talk to graphics people like Nicholas. One more question, then we're done. Um, last I heard, GNOME was uh, starting to depend on LogInd. Is that a problem you're also encountering in KDE? The question is whether depending on LogInd is a problem. Um, We've got basically the same shim approach as we do with the U-Disks. So we're looking to create the same Dbus interface that talks to 
uh, the actual, the real bits uh, behind it. And that once we've got that solved, it's solved for everyone. I'm not exactly sure what the state is of that. That was the last question. Thank you for attending. Thank you for paying attention. You've got four minutes to the next one.